I'm Suzanne Henriksen, a researcher and storyteller by trade and a world explorer, drink local enthusiast by heart. I'm traveling the world to celebrate and share the people, the process, the stories, and the innovations behind craft alcohol. And I can't wait to share our amazing finds with all of you. So let's get drinking, crafty cask style. Hello, hello, Tipler Nation. We just got on the road this morning from Springfield, Massachusetts, my parents' house, and head down to the DC area. And we are at 1-8 Distilling. For those of you who have been following us for a little while now, you've probably seen, hopefully you've seen, some of our virtual tastings with 1-8 Distilling down here in the Ivy City area of DC. Um, and so we've done a couple of virtual tastings with them and have totally fallen in love with not only their spirits, but, their distiller and maker and kind of co-owner here, Alex Lawfer as well. Um, so we're gonna head on in. This is the front right here. They're closed right now, so we kind of get a private experience. So you can come on in with me. Seed to glass. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a farmer full time, you probably don't have much time to <laughs> It feels like malted dry is not uh, as common in no. distillate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, malted barley tends to have a higher level of enzymatic activity to break down the starch and the sugar, so you need less of it. Um, also, it's just a flavor that we have become used to. I mean, all single malt, right? I mean, that's that malted barley, that's 100%. Sure. Uh, blended whiskeys you know, coming from Ireland and Scotland are predominantly malt, but they have other grains too. And in bourbon and dry whiskey, have generally used malted barley. Uh, we're obviously not the first to do malted dry. Now our rye is 28%. Okay. Uh, and in the bourbon, so 18%. Malted rye and But even the vodka, even the gin, even the barrel gin, they all have malted rye. Yeah. Yeah, that's they're, very cool. They're mostly rye. Yeah. So this I is love malted? This. this is malted, yeah. Well, like in the malted barley, you're converting already to start with sugar, so you're getting a little more sweetness. Oh That's not quite, I mean, I'll eat handfuls of this. When we're yeah. malting, we'll dump it in the topper there. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like cereal, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Whole grain Cheerios. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a lovely oh. product. I really like it. Um, most of it, they, they use uh, North Carolina grown grain in all of their products. Okay. Uh, but they occasionally have gotten rye from the same farm we get our rye. Are our new stills, uh, although we, we do use three other stills, some regularity, uh, as 
simple and straightforward as this little lemon. Yeah. Which is just a beautiful smell. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this fancy. Uh, we put this on a hot plate. We run water in and then the line out, and that's it. Wow. We'll do, uh, for example, while I was talking about that, distilling that cinnamon basil. We we'll do it all in this. Huh. Many batches, but wow. you know. Yeah. Have to be that fancy. So what do you say about, you know, because I feel like some distillers say, like, this creates a better flavor, a better, like, energy, you start using your audition, like, like, so how do you, like, how do you think about the balance of, like, the art and the science and, like, the early I will never attribute flavor to one process. There's so many steps. Uh, the still itself absolutely does contribute to flavor. You know, you are how you run it. That's sure. going to impact. Um, Something like this takes a lot of effort and energy and paying attention to right? Yeah, we have to pay a little more attention yeah. to that uh, yeah. when we're running it. And we don't do it all the time. But we have a, a library of botanical distillers that are done on this. So we have that those flavors ready sure. to go. Yeah. Um, uh, but really, I think the flavor inputs start with the grain itself, with the water. The grain is grown, uh, a variety of grain, and you know, go from there. You know, how are we handling the grain? How are we milling uh, all the grain in and all the grain out? Uh, the, uh, fermentation conditions, the yeast grain, the big inputs on flavor. Yeah. Then you get to the show. Uh, and then, if you're talking about whiskey, it's a better Alex, that's a sipping vodka. Right? Yes. And those are, like, I am not a vodka girl, and but I love sipping vodkas. Like, so I'm strange in the sense that, like, I pretty much never order vodka cocktails. I just don't really, really care for it that much. But if I find a good vodka, like, sipping on it, I really enjoy that over a cube. So do you attribute that, the flavor? To use for the multi rye? Yeah. The multi rye is a smaller component in the mash bill, but the rye itself. The rye. The corn uh, is going to give a little sweetness. There's not too much corn, but there is. So about, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, 28%. It's sort of uh, eyeball it. <laughs> At one point, I set these up so that they would be representative of oh. the mash bill. Oh, that's, that's cool. fun. Right. That's a great idea. Corn, rye, and then at the top, just a little. That's a rye. great idea to do that. I love right. that. My inspiration was twofold. One, I wanted to go true to the roots of vodka, and you're going back before potato, before corn came to Europe, and it was grains like rye. The mouthfeel of your clear spirits, man. I just I don't understand it. I don't that's understand. That's a technical term. Yeah. It, like, I just have a hard time on, like, why aren't other distillers doing this now? Yeah. So, okay, I filled this off the top. It's been sitting for a little while. It's probably even higher proof than 88 because, yeah, we get some separation occurring, even in a tank that size. Um, and again, not filtered. So Does the lack of filtration uh, encourage or like allow for more stratification in the uh, the proof from the top to the bottom? No, um, I mean, we would mix the tank before we started sure. filling it, and that would take care of that. Now, the, uh, the lack of filtration really is going to allow uh, some sediments from the botanicals. So after distillation, some of those oils will basically solidify. So it kind of falls so, on a solution. Yeah. So we, I mean, I'm super picky about gin. Like, I prefer gin in my martinis, I prefer gin to vodka, mm. but if they're super juniper heavy, like I have a hard time with them. It tastes like a Christmas tree, and so I'm, yes. I'm kind of picky about them, and I, your gin is absolutely one of my favorites. That's definitely higher than 88. <laughs> I should have mixed it up. You don't? Yeah, I think so. This is not how it's going to be. But, I mean, it's not so, so different. It's but... not 102. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the barrel. But it does feel like it's got a, <clears throat> a little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, too. I mean, I just really stuck to that top a couple yeah. inches. Uh, these are some of, no, these should be all of the botanicals. Yeah, I was wondering. This one was still coming from Ohio, but now the same farm, Lansange, is growing the Appalachian spice. Oh, 
Spice Bush. The American Spice Bush is the other name. So. But allspice. So these are a little dried out. Appalachian um, allspice. But though. if you want to check it out, I'd say break them up like this a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a little dry, but still getting some nice flavor, nice aroma. This seems unique to Greens of Paradise. I don't feel like I see that in yeah, it's, super often. I mean, it's Greens of Paradise come from Africa uh, and very peppery, widely used pre-exploration to the Americas. Mm. And then the chili took over. And you don't see or hear about Grains of Paradise very much. Uh, commonly used in Hefeweizens. Oh. Even Blue Moon has Grains of Paradise okay. on their own. The cast strength rye came out last uh, September. Your rye is already pretty high fruit, isn't it? It's 95. Okay. And our yeah. bourbon's 94, so yeah. yeah, out there. And then the bottled in bond bourbon, uh, which yeah sold out very, very quickly, uh, came out in January. So yeah, 144 bottles total on the bourbon, and 186 on the rye. The flavor of the rye though comes through crazily on that. And again, there's the like malty, creamy. Like it's not like I feel like a lot of things past strength is just like hot and that you can't get past it and you can't get flavor. And that is like flavorful. That would make a beautiful we, we're, we're constantly telling people because you know past strength feels like whatever, and we're like. I really believe like higher proof is better for cocktails. Like I oh, just, yeah. I just feel like it shows up more. It holds its mm -hmm. own. It doesn't get lost with all the other like flavors in there. And that would make a beautiful Manhattan or Yeah. Our standard bourbon is a blend of both the styles that we distill. So we distill high rye and we distill a wheat of bourbon. After aging separately, we blend them back. And so we make a four grain bourbon. So the Hickory King corn, that white, uh, kernel corn I was talking about earlier, that heirloom that was grown for us on all three farms now, um, and uh, rye, malted rye, wheat, and malted barley. Uh, but this one was only a single barrel, and it was a high rye barrel. So okay. there's none of the wheat, and there's none of the uh, malted barley. We had a, a really fun virtual release party for this back in January. Fun. Um, we had. Uh, there's a local group called the Whiskey Library of DC, so we had one, of the, one a couple of those guys on, uh, and we had um, there's a, a fantastic uh, bar in DC called Jack Rose. Uh, it's a temple to whiskey, yeah. all kinds of whiskey, uh, all of it. So if you want to taste something really unique, that's where to go. Okay. Um, and so Bill from there came. Oh, well, he didn't come. He was at his house. We were doing it all virtually, uh, and. Um, yeah, we just had a good time talking about it, how we make it, and also, you know, it's the, the standard release of bourbon started at two years old, and now our standard bourbon is about three and a half. Uh, the most recent batch that we uh, we just bought last week was only three and a half. Um, two years is the definition for straight. For straight. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And then um, bottle and bond has to be four, and this one is over. Well, we are so grateful for your time, course, and we, you know, we already we already knew you loved you loved your spirits, but it was so fun to come and in. Try a few more than we haven't had. Try a few yeah. more than we haven't had. See your production facility. Be here in person so you can see a picture of it. It was really fun. So thank you. Yeah.